Okay, fine. I expected sorrow and despair, but the situation here goes beyond even my prophetic inklings. Sure, no, no, it's peace on me. On the surface, yes. But peace through tyranny provides false harmony. Euraxia uses fear and threats of violence to keep the Khajiit in line, making them second-class citizens in their own province. It appalls me to think Euraxia and I are related. Did I better embarrass? I didn't mean it exactly. It would be better if I showed you. Follow me and I'll demonstrate the true depths of my half-sister's villainy. Her grip on Rimmon is far tighter than it appears. Okay. Yeah. Show me how the rest of keeps the Khajiit in line. Very well. But what I'm about to show you isn't for the faint of heart. Follow me. Have you ever visited a Rimmon workhouse? They treat no. the Khajiit workers worse than slaves. It's that building over there. For most of Rimmon's Khajiit, it's the only job available to them. The workhouse serves to snare the poor and the destitute, those who fall behind on their debts. They come here to find employment and earn a decent wage, but the costs deducted to pay for room and board leave them worse off than they were before. One of the first things Euraxia did after declaring herself queen was to institute tariffs and fines that apply only to Khajiiti citizens. No one else needs the workhouse. A cruel tactic, but effective. The rim in Khajiit? No. Any complaints incur fines for causing a public disturbance or some other inane ordinance. No one wants to risk falling even further into debt. It's ingenious. Monstrous, but ingenious. Such a slavery. Oh, Euraxia is clever. She pays the Khajiiti, and the workhouse isn't technically a prison. On the surface, it appears to be a place that helps society's unfortunates, but underneath? It's slavery without any of the uncomfortable trappings. Let's move on. Now, let's visit the Rimmon Marketplace. Take a look around. Business seems to be thriving, but appearances can be deceiving. It may be hard to see, but the Khajiiti merchants struggle to keep their stalls open while the less bestial business people rake in the profits. Euraxia would have you believe it's a matter of work ethic, but we know better. Unfairly doesn't begin to cover it. Khajiiti merchants must deal with high tariffs, extra inspection fees, costly licenses, Euraxia is squeezing them for every piece of gold imaginable. She even instituted a fur tax. A fur tax? What the f On the surface, it seems reasonable to make Khajiiti pay for extra inspections to ensure their fur isn't getting into the products they sell. And while they do shed, it's just another way to discriminate against the rightful citizens of this land. Hey, that's my fine. Come along. I want to show you the improvements Euraxia made to the palace wall. See the trebuchets? Notice how they're aimed into the city below. 
See how the siege weapons sit upon the walls? When it comes right down to it, you're looking at the secret of my half-sister's success. You mean her success? How else do you think Euraxia maintains order and keeps the elsewhere defense force at bay? She declared publicly and has repeated often that any attempt to liberate Rimen will see her unleash the full fury of the siege weapons upon the city. Euraxia may destroy the city. If Euraxia can't have Rimen, then neither can anyone else. She'd destroy the city in a heartbeat if she thought she was in danger of losing control. Of course, she tells her non-bestial subjects that only the Khajiiti districts are targeted. Really target the weapons that precisely? Absolutely not. But the lie makes her supporters feel better. The Khajiit know that even a peaceful protest could result in the destruction of Rimen. So far, no one has dared to challenge Euraxia's will in this matter, and for good reason. I think it's time you went into the top of Euraxia then. When we get to the palace, let me do the talking. As the Elder Tharn, I'll demonstrate my dominance over Euraxia and negotiate a cessation of hostilities. Yes, then I'll stab her in the face. guests now. I don't like the looks of these meddlers. I say we feed them to the dragons and be done with it. So you're Abner Tharn's bodyguard and valet. Not what I expected. I assume you want to follow your master into the Queen's inner sanctum, huh? I'll allow it. But first, I want to gauge the measure of your marrow. You're one of the necromancers? I am Queen Euraxia's chief necromancer. You may call me Zumog Foom. The other grave callers answer to me. And this is my familiar and confidant, Sir Cadwell the Betrayer. Not Cadwell's head. Ah, yes. The betrayer saw you when it looked through the soul shriven's eyes. The creature you know is a pale shadow of the dark night that once walked these lands. I exhumed his remains and reanimated him. Well, his head, it was all I could find. Good thing I cut for his head. My actions don't concern you. I just wanted to meet Abner Tharn's lackey and determine if Queen Euraxia had anything to fear. The answer is quite clear. Your insignificance rivals that of the soul-shriven fool, which makes you eminently forgettable. Now, about the rest of my body, oh pestilent one. You're in... Presenting Abner Thorn, Grand Chancellor and Overlord of Nibine, Imperial Battle Mage of the Elder Council, and Patriarch of the Thorn Dynasty, and his bodyguard. Ah, half brother, your arrival, it's so unexceptional. Pretending to be a queen is. Hush, Abner, you bore me. Bodyguard, you look interesting. Come talk to me. You heard her. Good luck. My sources indicated that my half-brother's associate was somewhat... taller. Oh well. Now, why in the world should I even consider negotiating with members of the losing side? Eh, <laughs> get the one, you. The directors can say to you are puppet. And if they plan to defend, they plan to betray you. Not that it matters, of course, because you're a treasure, a dumbass little... Anyway. A warning. 
How thoughtful. You do know that I defeated the Khajiiti army and took control of the Rimen throne? I am no one's puppet, I assure you. But why do you suppose I have anything to do with dragons? Eh, yeah, of course, I don't have that option. Oh, well. As I can have you undead, your necromancers, and leash on the Khajiiti defense force. Oh, how precious. I hoped my pompous half-brother would provide an amusement, but this is even better. I have a chamber set aside in the dungeons just for you. We'll play the most interesting games, you and I, until your body gives out. <sighs> You're good to this party. That means we're here under the truth and are free to live. You stupid Do one. not presume to lecture me. I make the rules here, not you or Abner. I have a special relationship with Mulan Mir, an understanding. The dragons will secure my hold over elsewhere, and there's nothing you or my half-brother can do to stop them. Of course, if they don't have a certain back, I can do it the easy way. This fake is. How about this one? I just kill, kill her anyway. Oh, can't win. We are fully ramming and drag you out the first way. After I stab you in the face. Enough! Zumog Foom, what news do you bring? The Desert Wind Adaptorium has fallen. We move against Riverhold on your word. Then the word is given. Now, half-brother. Treachery? How could I ever have anticipated this? Guards, take them to the dungeons. I think not. I suppose that could have gone better. <laughs> 